Welcome to Lit Happen, Saskatchewan Showcase of the Literary Talent of the Province. We're out on location today at Murdog Apparel in the Midtown Plaza. We're enjoying the vibe a lot. I'd like to welcome my guest today, well-known food writer, Bill O'Dell. Bill. Hello. Welcome to the show. I'm so happy you're here. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about your blog and all that, but first, I want to get it out to the viewers that you are a food writer. It's one of the yeah. it's one of the many things you do in the world. Yes, and uh, and food writing seems to be really big at the moment. Um, the whole people want to know about the culinary world. They want to know what they're eating. Right. They want to yeah. eat uh, locally. They 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 want to eat healthy. They want to be microbiotic and all that sort of. Some do. Yeah. There's there's <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Paleo. Yeah. There's pe there's Food Network has blown up over the last cu you know last couple of decades. So, yeah. yeah. And why do you think that is? Um. I think, like anything, it talks to a niche of people who really like that genre, I guess. You know, there are some people who really love sports, and the sports yeah. was always there. But food has really gotten to be this, you know, these people have become rock stars because of, yeah. you know, their literary expertise. You know, like Bobby Flay and Emeril Lagasse, and even uh, Amy Jo Eamon has mm. a local author. You know, she's written out of old Saskatchewan kitchens, and then there's... Um, there's another one where she's talking about recipes I stole from my mom. And these are all local people and they have talent locally, it's just that they've never gotten to that level. And I think one of the things that's kind of interesting is they're showing that people who are not traditionally trained still have very good recipes. I mean, think about it. Mm -hmm. your, your mom's lasagna, your mom's chocolate chip cookies were the best. They were yeah. much better than anything else you can get. Well, of course, you know, who did they learn it from? They learned it from mom. They didn't go to a professional kitchen. And I think that's, or a professional culinary school. And I think that's where this is kind of cool, that there are a lot of people that are getting out there and showing, hey, we can cook just as well. And wow. we can write about it just as well. Wow. Uh, do you feel that uh, the, the, there's been a restaurant boom in Saskatchewan mm -hmm. in recent years. I, I've certainly noticed in Saskatoon here, but I've noticed it all across the province. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that's a part of it? Is it all woven together? I think there's certainly a, uh, there's a correlation to people really interested in what they're eating. Uh, people are watching kind of the diet that they're on, but also, you know, local product, you know, that local food, you mm -hmm. know, Saskatchewan berries. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's, you know, everybody's been very interested in those, but getting that local product in and highlighting that, that's all what most of the major chefs have always talked about. So I think that's where, you know, this big Saskatchewan boom and and new eating establishments is coming from. Mm -hmm. Well, and do you feel that uh, society overall, or maybe prairie people, are maybe embracing a healthier eating lifestyle or no? Are we reverting back? There seems to be a lot of mixed opinions on this. Yeah, right. um, I think people are certainly more aware of what they're putting That's, in their mouth now. Yeah, you know, aware. They're, they're more aware of, you know, well, maybe I shouldn't be eating these chips versus, you know, there's local, you know, local food that would be better for me or something like that. Or, mm -hmm. or even just, you know, the, the, again, the paleo or, or gluten-free, yes. you know, as we're talking about, so. Mm. Uh, I think I think that has a lot to do with it. people are just more aware now. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. so this inspires you a lot, obviously, and you write your blog. Tell us a little bit about your blog. Just just share with us some details. Well, my blog is called Reluctantly Gluten Free Chili Head. A couple nice. of years ago, I was <laughs> I was diagnosed with celiac disease, and I had no clue. I'm what they call low symptom celiac, mm -hmm. and um, I've always been a chili head, love hot and spicy food. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's kind of a niche for me and it's a niche for, for uh, gluten-free writing for sure. Um, so most of my recipes are spicy, but they're all gluten-free because, you know, as a celiac, you can't have gluten. And that's one of the things, one of the problems that a lot of celiacs are facing is that, mm -hmm. you know, people come up to them and say, well, you can just cheat. Right. You know, we may not have the same symptoms as somebody that has like a peanut allergy, but you still can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's it's been fun. It's been an interesting journey. I've only been yeah. actually blogging about it for about the last year, but I've been food writing for quite a while. Yeah. Quite a while, yeah. 
Okay. In, a pre in a previous life, I was an editor, and I wrote a weekly newspaper column for the, nice. for the newspaper I was at. Nice. So, what kind of feedback do you get? Um, it's it's pretty interesting. A lot of the people I know just you know they look at the recipes and they're like oh this was awesome and a lot of it is it's kind of word of mouth you know i have to kind of have to do a lot of self-promotion yeah. i'm just now getting to the point where i'm getting people that i have no clue who they are and they're coming to my site wow. and it's it's really kind of cool uh yeah. and the social media just networking that way and mm -hmm. and getting more people interested it's 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 been an interesting journey over nice. the last year for sure nice yeah. Now this is just like I said, a corner of what you do. You you have a full time career, mm -hmm. and you do a lot of writing, and you're involved. I, you're involved in the the kind of the D and D crowd of <laughs> Saskatchewan. Uh, well, Magic the Gathering, but yes. yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And, and you have children. And I have children. Yes. Yes. And how's yes. the balance going? What balance? <laughs> 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 no, there's uh, it's it's a juggling act, but you know, with everything, it's 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 all about being being happy and being healthy, and yes. and, and and being able to spend time with the kids and nice. and do what I enjoy, and yes. if it correlates and I can cook for my kids, that's awesome. Yes, good. Yeah. I was hoping you were going to say that. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Now I know we're out of time, but I just want to ask you one more time. Uh, address the web address of your blog. Yes, it's uh, www.rgf-chilihead.com. Nice. And you can find me on Facebook at rgfchilihead.com, or Facebook. And then yeah. there's also I've got a Twitter account rgf-daddy at ch uh, Twitter. So, Sweet. Yeah. Good. I'm glad we took you. We we got a few minutes out of your busy yep. day, and we got you here at Murdog. So. Uh, I know, I know you have to go, you have things to do and people to see, so <laughs> yep. I just want to thank you for... Well, that's awesome. You. Anytime, Bill. All right. Okay. That's all the time we have today for Lit Happens. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can see previous segments on Shaw TV or on my website, westfunk.ca, and you can connect with us online on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So I'll see you next time on Lit Happens. <laughs>